So now let's look at some PCI career options, right? So uh, what are some of the roles and responsibilities of a PCI SME? And what are some of the salaries uh, that is associated with this, right? So uh, what are some of the career opportunities in PCI, yeah, in the PCI industry? Or if you want to work as a cybersecurity professional with your specialty in PCI, what are some of the things that you can do in an organization or what can you even do? What do PCI SMEs do? So like we talked about uh, now in cybersecurity, right? PCI is not like a standalone uh, area. It's a small niche within cybersecurity and it's arguably one of the very lucrative uh, areas of cybersecurity, right? And uh, for a QSA company, we know what we're talking about because when you do audits, uh, one audit, you know, uh, you can earn so much uh, within uh, an audit. And also for companies that we are auditing or companies that we do assessment on, uh, an assessment is just a point in time. They have to meet uh, compliance in uh, every 12 months when we do the assessment. But that is not really it. They have to meet compliance all year long, right? And for any uh, cybersecurity team that you find anywhere in any company, most of them don't really know anything about PCI. Frankly, if there is anybody here who is working in the industry and they are part of any cybersecurity team, they can like, like they should let me know, right? And it may be probably if they've been working longer and uh, they should let me know how many people on their team really knows PCI inside and out, inside and out, aside just knowing their six requirements and uh, there are six goals and 12 requirements and this is this and that is that, right? But going deep into it as to how to help the organization to pass uh, or to stay in compliance, you know, that is like a different uh, whole area on its own. So with these breaches causing companies huge sums of money, and also, when whenever it is time for an assessment, PCI assessment, you know, it's like there is a huge problem in the organization because everybody's running around. Even for organizations that have done this uh, so many times, right, uh, they still go through issues. And, you know, cybersecurity professionals, they're always scratching their heads up about, I mean, what do I really need and stuff like that. And the point of passing the, the assessment uh, is not you know, all be all, if you have a PCI subject matter expert who is helping the organization or leading the PCI program uh, all year long, it is better than just winging it and passing your assessment and then going back, you know, to bed. Because Target, when they were breached, they had just passed the assessment uh, probably like, I think a week ago, but they were still breached. Now you might ask how. The how is that, Assessment is a point in time thing, right? So if at a point in time you passed, it can be that tomorrow or in the next five hours, you are no more uh, in compliance because you have like maybe probably something changed on your uh, infrastructure or maybe you added something or there is a zero day vulnerability or I mean a whole different variety of things can go into it. Now let's get to what are some of the job opportunities. So as a PCI DSS subject matter expert, uh, you are going to be the guy or the girl in the organization who is going to help the organization uh, to stay in compliance all year long, right? So your role can range from a variety of, you know, like a whole list or a whole catalog of uh, roles that we are going to look at shortly, right? So you can be the lead, uh, you can be the, like the owner of the PCI program, uh, running the entire PCI program, uh, so everything that you're going to be doing, uh, we will call it, uh, you can work as an implementer. And what do we mean by implementer? So as an implementer, you are the one in the organization uh, making sure that they stay in compliance and they meet all the 12 requirements and the sub requirements, right? And not just uh, meeting it by reading, okay, this is this, that is that, but you really understand it and you understand the situation uh, of the organization by understanding uh, like their, their, uh, like their business governance or like their business goal, right? And also understanding the infrastructure and how you'll be able to 
uh, implement the PCI requirements and make sure they stay in compliance and not just stay in compliance uh, by passing their assessments, but then making sure they are not, uh, I'll say they are not uh, 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 vulnerable uh, and easily, uh, like they don't become a low hanging fruit for attackers, right? So we will look at some of the job uh, titles and we will talk a little bit about what each of these job titles will entail, right? And also for PCI, so what which organizations employ PCI uh, subject matter experts? Now, I also ask you which organizations accept credit card and debit card payments, right? Almost everybody, right? So meaning you can work in any industry. So first we'll talk about industries first before we go to specific. So you can work in the financial industry, work for banks, uh, work for merchants, work for like uh, uh, like food industry, uh, work for retail, work for uh, hospitality, because hotels, I mean, everybody accepts credit card and debit card. So you can work anywhere. And all these companies and uh, industries, they are looking for uh, PCI subject matter experts, right? So to be a PCI subject matter expert, I see this a lot on, on, on LinkedIn and I just found. There are a lot of people who are parading. They just put in their tagline, PCI DSS. Well, well, that is good, but what do we really know, right? That is the point. Like when it comes down to it is what are the skills and the knowledge that you are bringing to the table, right? To help the organization stay. So just saying, uh, or just parading around that you have PCI DSS SME, uh, that is not enough, but you have the knowledge and the skill to back it. And can you really speak intelligently to it and do an analysis of an organization's uh, situation now and be able to speak to it that, okay, we need to do A, B, C, and D. Uh, if they don't have a PCI program, how do you go about setting up a PCI program for them, right? Uh, like what are the building blocks? You know, uh, what are some of the PCI awareness training that you're gonna do for the entire uh, organization and then also for the IT group and for the cybersecurity group to help them to be more aware and to help the organization to stay safe, right? So uh, you can work in any organization, but you uh, as the subject matter expert, a lot is expected of you. So you have to have, you know, you have to get the knowledge and the skill uh, that will help you to really meet that expectation, right? And if you have that knowledge and skill, I think you can scale any interview easy. Because first of uh, most, cybersecurity professionals, they're not really deep into, most of them don't know much about PCI. And uh, not be, because they don't know, doesn't mean you can also BS your way and they wouldn't know, right? So even if they don't interview and they allow you in and they are expecting you to be the PCI God, right? You are the one who is going to help them solve their PCI problems and you also don't know anything. And then you might run into issues, bro. So what is the demand and supply ratio for PCI SMEs? So before we, we looked at specifically PCI SMEs. What is the demand and supply ratio of cybersecurity professionals? Right. So uh, I think last two weeks ish, we looked at last two weeks or last three weeks, uh, we looked at the cyberseek.org website that shows us the current demand of cybersecurity professionals uh, in real time. So currently there are over 700,000 on field cybersecurity jobs, right? And Within that, uh, like within that, we well, like we see that the demand is high, the supply is low, right? So uh, if there are all these jobs out there, they don't have the personnel to fill it, right? Uh, PCI is a niche within cybersecurity. So even if like if now we are in short of cybersecurity professionals, what about PCI professionals within cybersecurity? Um, probably maybe non-existent, right? So the demand, I will tell you, is very high because most organizations, uh, they are really in dying need of uh, PCI subject matter aspects, right? So not just PCI subject matter, you are not, you are going to be the PCI subject matter expert, but to be a PCI subject matter expert, you are also a cybersecurity subject matter expert, okay? So uh, that is why in our training, 
we make sure you are good when it comes to general cybersecurity. But when it comes to PCI, you are not just good, but you are uh, really on top of your game. So uh, you are among the top three or top five. Uh, if we pick anybody or any like anybody from anywhere in the industry, you'll be way up there, right? So the demand for cybersecurity professionals is high. The supply is almost non-existent, right? And uh, what type of training do I need to begin a PCI career? So for training uh, for PCI, uh, you wouldn't see, uh, I've not really seen around any PCI DSS training. Uh, that is very robust. And that will help you to get to where you want to get to, uh, like the one that we are offering at Arrhythmus Academy. So not to just uh, blow Arrhythmus Academy's horns, but I can assure you we are offering the best VCI training out there. And uh, also to add to that, uh, if you want to take VCI training anywhere, uh, make sure who is uh, really giving the like who is giving the training. Is the person giving the training a qualified? Uh, PCI assessor or like like a qualified PCI anything from PCI SSC, right? Uh, is the company giving the training? Are they in any shape or form related to a PCI company that is actually in the industry doing performing PCI assessments and they know what is going on and they know what you need, right? Those are some of the questions that you should ask yourself before you get into, because there are a lot of little trainings here and there. Somebody is teaching PCI on Udemy and stuff. Those ones, then you might as, as well just Google it, like Google it and read whatever you can get, right? <laughs> because that is what they are doing. They, they like they Google it and package it in some uh, training and they are just reading it to you, right? But if you need uh, training that is going to dive deep into PCI and really help you to understand the ins and outs and how to really apply it, but not just to read stuff, uh, reading is easy. Anybody here can read and understand. But uh, when it comes to the technicalities of PCI, uh, you might read it all right, but it, it is gonna be like you reading Chinese and you don't understand Chinese, right? So you can read it, it'll sound good, but do you really know how to implement it or do you really know how to go about it, right? So uh, if you need training, uh, I'll frankly encourage you to look at Arrhythmus PCI training. Or if you want to go elsewhere, or if you have some training elsewhere, uh, because I don't really know what you we were taught. Uh, maybe you can, how you'll be able to test your knowledge is to start you know, applying for jobs, uh, start going on the job market and start doing interviews. That will really help you to gauge uh, whatever training that you have, right? And not just for PCI, but for any cybersecurity training that you take, right? If you want to gauge you know, your level, start doing interviews. That will help you to really know that uh, what you were learning was it some uh, we were like they were were they just teaching you air eh, or you were actually learning something that is needed in the industry okay so training uh, obviously is big because you need the knowledge and the skill to begin a cyber a pci a career and where do you begin so you begin with knowledge and skill right you begin with knowledge and skill now within pci because there is no, like the demand is high and there is literally no supply. Uh, companies are not necessarily gonna be looking for 15 years of experience in PCI. I mean, if they have, like they have all those on there, then it's probably HR who is doing copy and paste, <laughs> right? Either than that, they want somebody who have the skills and the knowledge, that's it. Uh, not, you know, uh, any 15 years or 20 years or none of that. Can you do the job? That is really what they are looking at. Okay. And what are the salary ranges? We will look at the salary range here shortly. Okay. So these are some of the uh, job titles uh, in PC. And this is no shape or form. All of the job titles that are out there. There is a whole lot of job titles out there. But this is just some of the ones that we compiled for this uh, chat. Okay. So you can be a PCI compliance analyst, uh, PCI ISA. Uh, within the organization, uh, PCI media impact, uh, PCI compliance officer, PCI security officer, PCI compliance analyst, IT and security compliance uh, into brackets, uh, PCI DSS, uh, PCI security and compliance analyst, uh, 
PCI security. Okay, so that is the same term. Principal PCI uh, principal PCI compliance uh, IT compliance analyst with PCI senior analyst PCI compliance uh, IT PCI cyber uh, compliance manager PCI. So the list is endless, right? But I can tell you one thing. Though. Aside whatever job title you're gonna handle, like that you're gonna you assume in PCI, you're pretty much gonna be doing the same thing, right? <laughs> and the same thing meaning if you understand uh, PCI inside and out, and not just PCI DSS, but you have a good working knowledge of all the other uh, standards, uh, you will be able to work in any of these uh, job titles, right? So PCI manager, PCI analyst, PCI, this PCI, all of it, you are pretty much going to be doing the same thing. But they they need to give you a job title. So that is why we have this whole list. 